yi gane ye gane ye gane ye gane ye gane ho yi gane ye gane ye gane ye gane ye gane wat kun hola do zaha ko ego egi waga tsono ni zaha katu aya chatur ge nei nuwa ni wasunda de welcome everyone <coughs> this evening <coughs> bienvenidos bienvenuti and bienvenue to everyone here i believe that we're supposed to be now a multicultural society so reading everyone in many languages is good for us because uh language <coughs> is good for the communication and for understanding and it develops friendship and brotherhood of man and i'm very honored to be here this evening uh to be part of this opening my community is only about a 20 20 minute drive from here uh we are right across from a, a metropolitan city the traditional name of this community where you are sitting here today is called Jogge in my language is it means a place where the people divided in the groups and long time ago when the first Europeans came here up the St. Lawrence they went this way towards Ottawa River and so on and all the trade and economic uh development of the country be uh was centered here in Montreal my forefathers lived in the Mohawk Valley next to Albany, New York. And it's always but this was part of our territory. And it's always customary to begin with an opening. Our relationship to our mother the earth has always been strong and it's the first words that we use. We greet each other. We thank each other for gathering that we see one another that we got here in good health nothing bad happened on the way here no flat tire the plane didn't run out of gas you know we didn't have to get behind the rolling stones arcade we made it and so we are happy with that and now we bring our souls and our spirit together and we give thanks to our mother the earth in our language, the land is our mother. The soil is our mother. Life comes from the ground. So we give thanks to our mother, the earth. In our language, we say, Uwanzage, the land, Etinista, our mother. Other people speak differently. But wherever we go on our great Turtle Island, which we call North America. Native people, traditional people, wherever you'll gather, will also begin this way to give a greeting to the people that have gathered, remind each other of our responsibility to the generations that are coming. We, as people, our duty is to ensure that life continues, we say seven generations. I remember my great grandfather, my grandfather, my father, myself, my son, my grandson, my great grandson. The six generations right there that we have this responsibility for. When I was a boy, I used to visit this older lady as I heard earlier, all our connection is with the women. First, for the Iroquois people. It's not with us old guys. The power is there. But she used to tell me this. And where we live, the St. Lawrence is right in back of us, like 10 feet. And she said to me, one day, we're going to buy water to drink. 
and I was thinking, something wrong with this old lady. <laughs> the river was blue. You could see fish. We used to swim in there. Now today, we are buying designer label water. 250 for a bottle of uh, Fiji. Gasoline. 375 American. Something wrong with this picture. But you know, just the way native people have always spoke. I travel many, many communities since I was a young man. Now today, I'm considered an elder. But I just grew into that position. I didn't go to school for that. I lived that way all my life. I listened to my elders, the older people, the older women, because the women are the carriers of our society and our culture. We are matriarch. I follow the family of my mother. My mother is a bear. My grandmother was a bear. We've been bears before Columbus came here. And as long as our people continue, there'll be bears, there'll be wolves, there'll be all the family clans of our nations. But today, we are a united nation of people. And our concern and our focus should be similar because we all have children. In 2012, I was invited to Oaxaca to go to an international conference on corn. And at there, they spoke of chemical effect, chemicals that are banned in North America, but are sent to Central America. 20 million tons of chemicals in the year 2008. It's kind of mind blowing. We don't want it here, but we send it there. But then the food comes back here, and I think we got this uh, vicious cycle or boomerang effect going on. Then we talked about GMO. And then we talked about climate change. Climate change, but I look at it as world change because it's happening all over the world at the same time. It's just not here around Montreal. We had the most amazing, difficult growing season here that I've never saw one of my elders, who's 90 years old, he said, Silver Bear, I never saw a season like this ever in all my years. And people were concerned. I go to many places and talk in different nations. I go out to the New Mexico, I just came back not long ago from uh, Mexico again. I went to Yucatan and met with uh, Mayans and people from all Central America. And everyone has the same concern about the corn. For native people, the corn is the staff of life for us. We, we consider that this is the breast milk of our mother, the earth. Once again, the reconnection to women and female and the ground, the soil. That's where we need to begin. But in 2012, everybody thought the Mayan calendar would end and it would be the end of the world. The world was supposed to end last week too, but somebody was saying something. The world was gonna to come to the end, some kind of planet was gonna line up. But if you think, since 2012, it was the end of a time period. When I was a boy, not too long ago, 50 years ago now, it's that fast. There was millions of birds everywhere of all kind. Today, I see one or two. 
It rains and it rains and it rains and we have all kinds of bugs eating all our plants. Where's the birds? They're gone. And that's what this old lady told me. She says, one day the weather is going to change. And sure enough, we're living that. But once again, we need to bring ourselves back to the beginning. Everything, as even Mr. Spock said, for everything there's a beginning and there's a first time. And I like events like this and people sharing with the great concern and passion because it affects everyone. Young people that study in school learn alternatives. The alternative to all the bugs is not going there and taking Roundup and blasting them. There are no butterflies. There are no bees. There are no snakes. There are no frogs. Where I live, when it would rain, there'd be thousands. Now there's two or three. And because of chemicals, the frogs, everyone is turning female. But at a time when they, there's going to be no male frogs, that frogs ain't going to continue. They're going to disappear. So there's a lot to consider. For Native people, we talk and we live this way. And we share with everybody that we can. Because it's all our responsibility. You know, that's the way it is. So I'm getting a flash card over here. I only got a couple more minutes. So I guess I have to thank the Pope in Rome. <laughs> I got to thank uh, Temptations. You know, Diana Ross of the Supremes. This is like a award, uh, an award show. <laughs> but that's my generation right there. <clears throat> the list is long, but I'll get to it. Anyways, I'm very happy. Wagatsununi. Sahakatu. That means to see everyone. is That means we are gathered. Numwa, meaning and now, at this time in this presence, where we are in the world. Now I'm going to talk like Jimmy Swagger. This is the way it is. We have to have this concern in our heart. We have to get up and live it. We have to do it. We have to be it. There's no time left. Where are the bees? What power do we, ha do we have to bring back the bees? What power do we have to create butterfly? What power do we have as humans to restore the birds? It's a lot to think of. As native people, as Mohawk people, this is what's first. The words that come before all. Before anything, we start with the soil, Uhunzage, and we come up the plants, the berries, the trees, the animals, the great forest, the water, the sky, the thunder, the stars, the moon, and finally the great spirit above, that we are all part of this circle. When the European people came here to this land, our forefathers, all they needed to do was turn around and walk back in the forest. They would have perished. When they landed in Plymouth, they could have did the same thing, as just walk away back in the forest. But instead, because we are sharing people, we share everything. We share that knowledge, and through all the things Native Americans have gone through, praise the Lord, it's a miracle we're still here. <laughs> I'll tell you. You hear residential school and all these things, we're all affected. But even those of you that haven't been there, I think you're affected too, because you realize things that we didn't. 
My grandfather went to residential school, but he ran away from there and he hopped on a train. In the old days, that's how they got around. They jumped on a train. And he went to San Francisco and he worked on the Golden Gate Bridge. When he finished there, he went to New York and he worked on the Empire State Building, my grandfather did. All the great buildings of the United States and bridges, you will see Mohawks who are involved in that because we feel that we are close to the sky, high as an eagle. And this is not a song from Iron Maiden. <laughs> and laughter is the best medicine. We know that is true. And no matter how serious we are, we've got to have a little bit of laughter. Because even Dr. Phil is talking about it nowadays. <laughs> so we always combined. Because no matter our creator allows us every day to get up. And we should be grateful. And at night, be grateful again that we pass another day. We are able to live. We are able to breathe. We're able to laugh, we're able to cry, we're able to be alive. And our connection all begins with our feet in the soil of our mother, the earth. And that's what is the teachings of my people. And I'm honored to be here to share with you this evening and as first peoples in this land to welcome you all and welcome each other and in the next three days that uh, good things, strong things will happen. I don't have a degree in anything. Sometime I could be considered, well that guy's full of hot air, but that's all right. Today I work in the federal prison of Canada. I have been dead for, there for 10 years. There's one thing, that's what I do. I work with not only native inmates, all inmates who want to reconnect with themselves. And the reconnection is always the land. And respect is the strongest thing. And respect for women, because we see in the world there's not a lot of respect for women. How could you not love your mother? How could you not love the land? How could you not love your children and the children to come? Maybe you don't have children yourself, but you have a nephew and a niece, and you want to see that water flow, and you want to see that grass grow, but it's all by holding hands in a circle and making it happen. So, I got a minute? I got two minutes. Great. I'll sit here and bore you a little bit longer. <laughs> but anyways, so, I just want to wish you all a good uh, symposium. And, uh, and so on. I got to get back home but soon. Now we're getting ready. We're harvesting our, our crops. We're braiding our corn, preparing for the winter, I'm preparing seeds for next year. And as far as climate change goes, corn and all our plants, they have adapted over time. They have been here hundreds, thousands of years. You and I are here 60, 70, 80 years. And what we see in our lifetime is part of our consciousness. But the corn has been here two, three thousand years. It's experienced everything and the consciousness of man. So once again, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Muchas gracias. Thank you.